Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this week into the Comp video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the alleged release date for the GeForce GTX 11 series. And this uh, set of leaks comes to us through an AIB partner, which was corresponding to another YouTuber in private and then have since uh, appeared online. Now, these release dates are for the 1180, the 1180 plus, the 1170, and finally the 1160. So let's go through the release date windows first, and then we'll discuss the validity of these rumors. So starting things out with the release dates, we have the 30th of August for the 1180, the 70 and the 80 plus will release on the 30th of September, and then we see the 1160s emerge on store shelves on the 30th of October. In regards to why these cards have been so delayed and held back, the email, uh, assuming it's genuine, tells us that it is quite simply because of the oversupply of the 10 series. Of course, this is certainly not the first time we've heard these rumors, right? I mean, they've been pretty consistent. Basically, NVIDIA were thinking, much like AMD, and actually a lot of AIB partners that the mining craze was going to continue. Therefore, they were doing everything they could to get GPUs onto store shelves and satisfy the demand. And then the bottom fell out of the mining market and well, you know the rest. So uh, what we have, of course, are multiple different SKUs. Now, first of all, let's tackle the most obvious thing and that is the 1180 plus. Now the 1180 plus, there are a couple of different things it could be. The first and the most obvious is that it could be variants of the AIB partners. So, for example, it could be the custom 1180s. The only reason I'm slightly uncertain that this is 100% the reason, or 100% the thing rather, is because we don't have, for example, the 1170 plus appear at the same time as the uh, 1160s. After all, if once again we look at the release dates for these, the 30th of August, um, is the release date for the 1180s and then the 70s appear on the 30th of September at the same time as the 1180 pluses. So does that mean that the 1170s and 1180s, uh, the 1170 pluses launch at the same time? Now, so it could be custom variants of the card or it could be slight differences in specifications. One theory, for example, is it could have double the VRAM. One of the leading theories is that we could have a 1180 which has eight gigabytes of memory and we also have another one which could have 16 gigabytes of memory. That could certainly be the case. After all, it's very unlikely we're gonna see 12 gigabytes of memory. It's almost certain these cards are gonna be on a 256 bit bus which should provide ample memory bandwidth given that we're gonna be seeing GDDR6 most likely running at let's say 14 GBPS. So just for those who are curious, that puts out around 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, I say roughly, because obviously we might see some manufacturers who decide to overclock the RAM a little bit, which obviously your mileage may vary there. So we could certainly be seeing around 450 to 480 maybe gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, depending on what the overclocks are of that particular memory. NVIDIA in the past have also used the plus naming convention to signify a GPU which has higher performance levels than the base models. For the sake of argument, we can look at the 9800 and the 9800 plus. So they obviously are a lot older series cards, so they have a whopping 128 streaming processor units or CUDA cores. The key difference is, however, the core and shader clocks. Back then, the shader clock was separate from the core clock. So the 9800, we're just gonna call it the vanilla, ran at 675 for the core, 738 for the plus, whereas the shader clock was 1675 versus 1836. RAM clock speeds, however, were identical. So obviously in this case, the uh, pluses were slightly faster. So it's possible this could be the difference. It could be that Nvidia just choose to launch a couple of models of this particular card, whether they be the founder's editions or not, or it's possible that the 1180s are just the founder's editions and then we will see the 1180 pluses as like the custom AIB partners, which obviously those partners are free to do whatever they want, right? I mean, they could choose the golden sample GPU core that happens to clock up all the way up to the stratosphere and then they can sell that as a premium or they can just choose to go with the uh, reference clock speeds in the reference cooler design and it is of course up to them. Which one it is, who the heck knows? So do I think these emails are genuine? Well, 
I will be honest, I don't know uh, Gamers Meld. I don't watch their YouTube channel. In fact, honestly, I don't watch other YouTube channels really in terms of technology that much at all. There are a couple of retro gaming channels I watch. Uh, but I don't really watch a lot of PC reviews and so on. The reason behind that, quite honestly, is because I find I don't want my opinion to be, uh, what's the word, influenced one way or another. I like to kind of go in fresh and just kind of see what my personal opinion is as I'm kind of forming new stories or as I'm reviewing products. So I don't watch their YouTube channel, so I can't speak to how genuine it is, and I have not heard of this email previously. And doing a little bit of digging, uh, videocards.com, who are pretty respect, uh, respected, excuse me, have also not heard of this rumor before. But that isn't to say that it doesn't exist. It's possible that this particular partner just heard about this information, or it's possible that it's still being kept rather private and to a very select group of people, and therefore he happened, uh, Games Mail, have to get very lucky regarding actually speaking to the right person. It's also possible that he has an old release date that has since been updated. So for example, rather than seeing the cards launch in let's say August, for all we know they could launch in January. Now I'm not saying this is the case and I'm not saying this information is incorrect. Honestly, in terms of release window, I wouldn't be surprised if it's fairly accurate. At the end of the day, the 11 series replacing the 10 series by about this point makes sense from the financial impact of NVIDIA themselves. The fact that we're hearing uh, companies like TSMC tell us that the uh, fourth quarter is going to see bolstered results because of the manufacturing of the next generation NVIDIA GPUs. And likely this, of course, does mean the 11 series. After all, it's not been long since they've had Volta. So next generation would not be like a new GPU from the data center point of view, as in like an entire new architecture. So realistically, that does mean the gaming side of things. And furthermore, well, the 10 series is now at the point where, sure, they are still trying to get rid of the mining cards. And you can tell that they're trying to get rid of these, these mining cards. And I'm calling them that because they're basically GPUs that were manufactured for the purpose of mining, right? Of satisfying that demand. And you can tell that NVIDIA were trying to get rid of them because of the, the sheer number of SKUs that have been released, particularly with the 1060s. I mean, how many 1060 cards have been launched? And don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing NVIDIA for that decision. It makes business sense and ultimately they are a business. So I do believe that these timeframes are roughly right now. So I'm gonna probably say that this rumor has a fairly good chance of being right. But of course, they are GPU launches. Therefore, those products could be delayed for anything. It could be that, you know, the GPU's on a ship and then that ship happens to sink. So, you know, it could be a thousand different reasons that the launch is postponed. It could be that the mining craze picks back up again. It could be that uh, memory prices go absolutely crazy and then Nvidia want to kind of ride that out. But I do think that if you are the owner, and this is ultimately where I'm going to kind of end the story, if you are the owner of a reasonable GPU right now, I would highly suggest you do wait on buying a new one. The only reason I would suggest you do buy a card right now is if you get a crazy good deal on a really nice high-end GPU. Uh, in fact, I'm actually surprised we're going to be seeing the 1060, uh, so the 1160s launch so soon after the 1180s. I guess it does make some measure of sense. I'm also going to be very curious to see how AMD respond to all of this with the 11 series. They don't really have a product which can compete. Are we going to see a refresh of the Polaris again? Are we going to see 7NM Vega appear after all? Are they going to try and push the release date up for Navi? Or are they just going to ride it out? knowing quite well that the CPU division of their company is doing really well. Most likely Navi, from the rumors, is gonna be really nice for the value, in terms of the value slash performance ratio. Of course, the rumors are that it's gonna be faster than Vega 64, not hugely so, but let's say 10, 20% faster than Vega 64, but at a really good price point, mid-range car price point. So that apparently, if accurate, would appeal to a great number of people. I mean, let's face it, if you can get a car for like $250, for example, which puts out roughly the same level of performance as like the 1080 tie, or perhaps even more, I suspect a lot of people are gonna jump on that and be very, 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 very happy to do so. And it most likely will sell rather nicely. And of course, in, uh, AMD are still making money selling GPUs with their GPU division to the uh, 
consoles and most likely they also have some orders in for the PlayStation 5 and the, and the next generation Xbox as well so most likely they're not going to be going bankrupt or anything anytime soon and their stock is being consistently upgraded and one of the reasons behind that of course is that they've been chipping away Intel in terms of the CPU lead which actually brings us to the next story. We've heard a lot of the ninth generation of Intel processors. From what we can understand and a quick rumor roundup these ninth generation processors will be based on the Coffee Lake architecture. There won't be that much difference in terms of the actual architecture of the processor, but we will see slightly improved manufacturing processes most likely and increased clock speeds. The rumors are we're gonna see at least a couple of hundred megahertz on the ninth series. Whether there's any changes in like the caches or anything like that is probably unlikely, but it's not been confirmed at this point. Another consistent rumor is that we will see these processors soldered. So the toothpaste is gone and the processor processes will be soldered which honestly would be a major change and it would be an incredible step up for the current from the current lineup of processors and it would most likely mean that even if they were to do it to the only the K series we could most likely see 5 gigahertz at a bare minimum overclock and probably even considerably higher than that particularly if you have a good water cooling setup I won't be surprised if mid 5 gigahertz was not particularly uncommon so the Japanese website niche PC gamer claims to have found a Taiwanese website which allows you to pre-order the ninth generation of processors from Intel. It does not have all of the specifications yet, but we can ascertain pricing for the pre-orders and we also have confirmation that the i9-9900K is a thing. So the 9900K has, what you say it with me, eight cores, 16 threads, once again, just to remind everyone, the clock speeds have not been confirmed and they have not been confirmed for the 9700K either. But we also have the 9600K, which has 3.7 gigahertz, 4.5 gigahertz for the turbo frequencies. Uh, we have the 9600, which has the same clock speeds, but much lower base clocks. The 9500, which has 3 gigahertz, 4.3 gigahertz for the turbo. So that's a couple hundred megahertz less and so on and so on. So pricing is, of course, very difficult to ascertain because A, it's a pre-order price and B, it's being converted from a couple of different currencies. So converting the currency to US dollars, we're looking at 525 US dollars for the i9-9900K, which is quite a hefty price. And whether this price is actually accurate or not, it's unknown. But I certainly wouldn't be surprised if it's roughly the price point you're going to be paying. After all, it's not like the uh, 8700K is particularly cheap and most likely this website is also putting sales tax on top of that and so on and so on so I wouldn't be surprised if the pre-order price is roughly on par with what you're going to expect assuming these leaks are genuine and that really is what it comes down to right now uh, the reason I'm mostly tackling this is because it's currently doing the rounds on the normal websites including Reddit and the problem is a lot of these retailers particularly in Taiwan and so on they do have a habit of putting products which aren't even available for order uh, online and then basically just snagging up the pre-orders and you get the idea. So do I think these leaks are accurate? Well, honestly, um, I definitely am certain that the uh, 9900 or whatever it ends up being called, I mean, goodness knows why Intel are deciding to skip the 9800K, goodness knows what, what that's all about. But we do know, of course, that the eight core coffee lakes are genuinely a thing. After all, they've also been confirmed pretty much at this point for the low end Xeons as well. We've seen multiple roadmaps that tell us that the uh, eight core coffee lakes are pretty much confirmed. We've even seen Intel themselves accidentally confirm the existence of the ninth generation of processors. So that part I'm all good with, but whether this website really has these processes available for pre-order or not, specifically whether they're actually in their inventory chain and they actually know the pricing or whether they're just sticking them up there for the sake of it. After all, quite often Taiwanese websites and other websites in general in Asia do have a kind of a habit of doing this. And we've seen it even with the GeForce 11 series, if your memory serves. So yeah. Um, while I'm not 100% certain that the website definitely does have them, I can almost be certain that yes, uh, it's pretty damn certain that the ninth generation of processors will probably go up to that type of pricing. And finally, we're going to be discussing Amber Lake, which is yet another mobile focused selection of Intel processors. So let's first of all go through the specifications of these different SKUs. 
we have the Core M3 8100Y, two cores, four threads, 1.1 gigahertz for the base clock, turbos up to 3.4 gigahertz. We have the i5 8200Y, two cores, four threads, 1.3 gigahertz for the base clock, 3.9 gigahertz for the turbo clock. The i7 8500Y, two cores, four threads, 1.5 gigahertz and 4.2 gigahertz respectively. Now all of these processors from what we're hearing are going to be based on the 14NM++ node. So very similar architecturally to Coffee Lake. Now don't forget Coffee Lake and let's say KB Lake have very little difference. Obviously with the desktop side of things though you've got those additional processor cores and so on. But architecture wise if you were to go from Skylake to Coffee Lake there's not that much of a difference. These processors though do operate in a power envelope of just 5 watts which is very impressive. All of these processors also have the same iGPU, which is the UHD615. And furthermore, they all have the same amount of cache, which is four megabytes. These will most likely appear in devices such as two-in-one type of things, Microsoft Surface, uh, very low power notebooks, that type of thing. So they definitely have a great deal, deal of usage scenarios that they can fit into. And once again, this is not necessarily a super exciting product for high-end gamers. But this does highlight one of Intel's key strengths at the moment, and that is the sheer number of products they have in their lineup. Yes, AMD are eroding some of their server dominance and even their desktop processor dominance, but when it comes to the sheer number of SKUs, the sheer number of product lineups, and the sheer configurability of Intel's processors, AMD just can't quite yet compete. So without question, Intel are managing to drive the sales and keeping the x86 dream alive for the company in various product segments. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'm going to take this moment to also plug another video that I've been putting together, which you can find linked in the video description, and that is the impact of resolution and CPU core scaling. Once again, that's linked in the video description, but I'm going to let you all go. So hopefully uh, I'll see you soon. Uh, remember to subscribe and uh, like and all of that type of thing. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.